Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I am in Finland once again for Finnish Brutality. It is a shooting match put on by Varus Saleka. It's an excellent match. I try to go to it every time I can. And I have a blast out here. It is a combination of physical fitness as well as shooting. And what I love most about it is it really focuses on more tactical shooting versus just being like another CrossFit competition when other competitions kind of tend to focus more on that. And I am joined today by Yari. So my good friend Yari here, I've known him for a very long time and uh, was my first time out here last summer. And I had an absolute blast and I was so stoked to be invited back again to participate in shooting with the Finns. So um, kind of explain yourself, like kind of why, uh, explain to the audience why you guys put on these events. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this is the sixth uh, time when we arrange the Finnish brutality. Yep. And uh, it's, um, of course, in Finland we have uh, quite lively uh, uh, shooting community, especially among the reservists. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we wanted to have a match which combines the, the shooting skills, uh, physical things, and also the mental challenges, and to do it in a cool way and a fun way. And that is uh, the reason why we started to arrange the matches and it has grown over the years. So I yeah. think now we're maxing out this facility, but it's damn fun, <laughs> fun event. It's like a festival. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like everyone out here is having a great time. And I tell you, like when you said fun and what you guys can do with these stages, like we were shooting from a freaking truck today yeah. at Target. Moving, that was a moving truck. Moving truck. So the truck starts and you start engaging those targets. Yeah. And I remember that from last year and that was the coolest shooting stage I've ever done. Yeah. And you guys really uh, take it to the next level out yeah, here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting, um, you know, being my first time out here was last year and shooting in Europe in general. I have kind of passed through Europe in the past but kind of seeing different European shooters and kind of like the reasons why they do things and uh, especially here in Finland there's a kind of a would you say that most of the people who are really serious in the shooting are here or how is like the general shooting like vibe out here in Finland? Um, I think the the uh, shooting community is uh, pretty lively mm -hmm. um, you get kind of divided in uh, three categories like uh, one is of course the hunters hunting mm -hmm. is really uh, big in Finland, so yep. there are hunters. Uh, then there is a reservist who do the applied reservist shooting, mm -hmm. or uh, IPSIC or some other uh, practical discipline, and come come here. And then there is like uh, uh, old disciplines like the Olympic shooting. And but it's kind of um, uh, quite versatile mm -hmm. and uh, past few years uh, shooting sports have increased a lot mostly due to the um, Russians' uh, invasion to Ukraine. There yeah. are more people getting active in reserves. They want to kind of update their skills. So all the shooting courses uh, are fully booked, ranges are fully booked. We are getting a lot more people into the gun community nowadays. Mm -hmm. So you do you think there are a lot of guys come out here to this event to kind of like test their skills? Like when I, whenever there's a big thing in the United States was like, what is it to be like a, a prepared citizen within the United States? And I think to you guys that is even more prevalent just due to your guys' next door neighbor. Is yeah. that kind of like what you, is that like a baseline of when, when you guys consider being a con, concerned and prepared citizen here in, in Finland, is it always like in case the Russians invade? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the worst case scenario what could happen and that's why we still have a, a universal conscription like yeah. the, the mandatory service for uh, guys and uh, girls can uh, opt in um, but uh, kind of being the prepared citizen I, I think nowadays it's a, a hot topic around the world but in Finland it's been there always because that's the basis of uh, our defense strategy we talk about the total defense strategy so we have the conscription army, uh, everybody goes through the service, either the, the military service or, or uh, civil service. Um, all walks of life are geared towards uh, defending Finland if the need arises. So in that sense, like this event, most of the guys who are shooting here are uh, either reservists 
or ex-military or uh, active duty or the people who um, want to kind of keep their skills up, uh, up to a certain level. So to our American audience, we do not have a force conscription service, um, as everyone knows here, but it is a part of your guys' culture, right? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's uh, part of the Finnish system because we are such a small country. We are only 5.5 .5 million people, so, and we should kick the Russians ass, so we need lots of troops, and the whole society should be geared towards defending Finland if the need arises. So you think that like creates a more resilient um, society? Yeah, because people are having the basic skill set about the, the, how the how the military works. Like and what the, to do if shit went down? Like yeah. if, if shit hits the fan, yeah. the base level civilian or citizen kind of knows what to do. Yeah, yeah, like right. how, how, to, uh, how to purify water, how to sleep in the woods, how to use firearms, like basic tactics. Um, first aid, like all, all that stuff. So I think it's uh, ingrained in us, uh, our society and it's, um, it's a part of the culture. Like if you look the different surveys, like uh, should we uh, uh, move to the, the professional military or keep the conscriptions? Even though we are now NATO, uh, majority of the people are saying that the conscription is good because it creates the, the kind of the solid base for the society and now even they are thinking the expanding it to to uh, female uh, citizens in a sense that everybody should serve because now it's a, a, a voluntary uh, for women to go to the service so that has been a discussion that it would be equal and that way we would uh, gear up the whole whole society take care of our country so you get, is it is it just the military or can they also do like fire and paramedic and all that kind of stuff or like is there either or or is it just it's, military uh, for for the girls it's if they opt in uh, it's only military mm -hmm. and it, because it's mandatory for guys and some people might have their values conflicted with the armed service so they can then opt in to do some uh, other, other public service, service. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of that's kind of interesting, and in it's like we don't have obviously we do not yeah. have that in America, and there's a lot of guys and gals who lack a lot of the skills that would be needed if something you no know, terrible happened in the United States. There's not such an immediate threat as you guys have here, yeah. so I think a lot of people take that for granted. Yeah. But you know, a lot of people, especially within our you know firearms community, yeah. is always interested in learning these yeah. different types of skills because they don't have that background. Yeah, and, and I think it's not only the skills, but uh, when if I think myself when I was uh, 18, 19 year old kid, yeah. like going through the service and you meet people from all walks of life, you need to learn to kind of uh, suck it up and kind of uh, face the, the all the challenges. Uh, I think it's a good Springport for the life that uh, I, I remember from really salty um, Sergeant Major, like during one evolution, he said that if you quit once, you quit always. And that stuck on me that I don't quit. Like yeah, how to get better at not quitting is just doing a bunch of hard shit without quitting. <laughs> yeah. Having how, how to become mentally strong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it's uh, it has a lot of benefits in that way, but uh, that uh, people are getting used to work with uh, in a teams and uh, it, and you get the lifelong friends and all that. Yeah, a lot of people like when they think it's like, oh, I don't want to join the military because I won't learn anything there. Well, it's like I was in the infantry and I learned a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I learned how to do land navigation. I know yeah. how I know how to be out in the woods and survive. I know, you know, basic tactics. Um, mostly I learned about myself, yeah. what I was capable of, the things that I could achieve, you know, physically and mentally. And as a young man, I think that is something that's kind of, you know, quite important yeah. and for someone to find out because you don't want to find that out <laughs> later on in your <laughs> life when you really need yeah. it. Um, and I think it's kind of important. It's almost like a development. It was good for me and uh, good for I thought the too. military was, was a great, I don't want to be a PSYOP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that everyone needs to join, but honestly, I had a, it was good for me and I liked it a lot and I learned a lot more than just like what people would typically think. Like, this is not gonna prepare me to yeah. be a better 
you know, office jockey. Yeah. Uh, that's not why I joined. But anyways, guys, um, so I kind of want to go over Yari's kit. Um, so what he's wearing today is essentially what he would wear if shit hit the fan, if the Russians came across the border, um, yeah. what his, you know, go to war kit would be. So yeah. let's start off with the plate carrier here. Yeah, We're both I, wearing the same plate carrier. Yeah, I have my my plate carrier here. Uh, it's uh, our uh, LVPC uh, Lowis plate carrier. This is pretty much my direct action type of setup. Uh, I have a 3 Max here uh, in combination with the belt. I have a 4, one in a gun, I have 5, and then maybe in a back panel, a few extras. And uh, you're planning on being on team because there's yeah. other, you know, other guys that yeah. you would operate and go out with. Yeah, and That's then cool. I have a few general purpose pouches uh, where I would, depending on my role, I would probably have the bangs, frags. Uh, maybe having the, the kind of breaching charges mm -hmm. here, maybe in uh, um, in some of the pockets and, and at the back, and then I would have a dead cord and everything on the other side that they don't. And on your back, you have something a lot of guys are missing, is breaching tools that you yeah. see here. You got the bolt cutters, which I'm not, you got me wanting to put bolt cutters on my kit again. Yeah. I haven't worn bolt cutter, cutters on my kit since I was in Ranger Battalion. Yeah. We used to do that all the time, run those things on our back panels. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you're in an urban environment, yeah. getting through a locked gate, you know, it can be as simple as getting some basic bolt cutters. Bolt from cutters, the like local cro yeah. crowbar, uh, hammer, a hooli tool. The, yeah. Uh, so this is like I have enough space that I can kind of fit the stuff here, and then I have the the radio pouch. And is your radio on? Is, that, is your radio on right now? No. no oh, I thought that was a light going on. Never mind. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, then on. Uh, Kind of, uh, I have the first line is my belt kit. There I have a med kit and a tourniquet and a pistol. I, I like to keep the pistol side. Yeah, uh, kind, kind of, of slick so you don't have yeah. a bunch of stuff there. And um, yeah, this is pretty much the direct action type of setup. Of course, what I would it, have a- What is this comms right here? Yeah. What, yeah, is, what is that thing? What is that, that PTT that you're Yeah, that's there? a PTT. It's a Finnish Savox. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they do it, it and uh, it's a Finnish Pitium uh, radio. Uh, and their headset. He's just running a bow thing like most of us <laughs> Americans. <are>. Yeah. <laughs> so um, then, of course, I would have a helmet here. Uh, yeah. And uh, now I just kind of had my cool ball cap. But pretty much, uh, and I can extend it a bit. Uh, I can add some pouches that if I know that I need to have some specific, I can have it uh, here. But I usually try to keep it pretty clean. Um, so, yeah. Pretty basic kinda, stuff. I think that was kind of cool that you're touching on the point where you're like planning to be on, like on a team with a bunch yeah, of guys, yeah. which is you know kind of hard to find in, in the United States of a group of guys who are into guns, but are also into training, but at a training at a level that you're on a team. Yeah. But here, you know, in Finland, pretty much everybody has had some base level of knowledge on how yeah. to do this. So I, I would imagine that within the gun sphere, yeah. of people who take this stuff seriously are. Yeah kind of knowledgeable know how to do some Yeah, and, and most of the guys are still, uh, they are assigned in a reserve and they, they have a unit and yeah. they have a squad and a team and they have the SOPs. So mine is following pretty much how we set up. How it. everyone else does yeah, it too. Yeah, because we know then we of course mark like the, there's a Lidl, there's a Banks and all that stuff. And it's a unit specific in some degree. Yeah, that's cool because like in order to do that in the States, you got to get those guys all <laughs> on the same page of why you're doing this. Yeah. Um, it is to, you know, for our Second Amendment, yeah. it is to protect against, you know, a foreign government, yeah, yeah. our own government. Yeah. And that is a large thing that like, that is kind of was shunned away in yeah. what we define our two, our Second Amendment for. It's, oh, it's all about hunting or oh, it's about <laughs> sport shooting. No, it's not. It's about killing tyrants. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people need to be reminded about that. And as long as you get a group of guys like that, you an SOP on how you guys set your kit up, so everyone's kit is relatively set up the same way, is kind of important. Yeah. But um, what is yeah. your uh, what is the rifle setup that you got running on right now? Yeah, I have um, uh, my um, this is uh, my own build. I have a KP15 polymer, kind of a monolithic lower, uh, and then I have the one extra. Daniel Def uh, 16 inch uh, upper, so I just put them. It's a Daniel. That's a yeah, Daniel upper. Yeah. Yeah, V7, and uh, then I have a Wardex one, one to six. Is this like your go-to rifle, or is this yeah, it's the match? kind of. I, I took it to the match because it's uh, as a cool paint job, Tiger Stripe, and uh, 
but uh, my, my go-to rifle is um, a bit different setup there. I have a... Is it an AR? Yeah, a, a, yeah. AR um, the rifle, 11-inch uh, barrel, uh, suppressed uh, with the laser. Uh, I have a higher mount. So that's dot. interesting. Is like since you guys is, you guys were running the RK, yeah. which is an AK variant yeah. in 7.62, yeah. but even you guys still run an AR-15 because you guys. Yeah, because <laughs> and, and now there is a kind of a program going on that we are shifting away from the RKs and getting some sort of the AR type of or uh, system. So well, most of the guys are a bit ahead of the curve, yeah. but. Um, of course, when, when we go to train in a unit, we get the issued guns, but for uh, own training and my shit hit the fan rifle, like I rely on yeah. my own stuff. Well, I'm wearing the, pretty much the same kit as he is. It's the exact same plate carrier, same belt rig, different holster. Don't worry about the holster. <laughs> it's a loader, but this is also your AK setup as yeah. well. I've been using this on the match today. It's been working out great. And what I love about these mag pouches as well is it runs AK mags in case you need it to. Yeah. So. Yeah, overall, like, I've been having a great time out here, man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just testing out your guys' kit yeah. and really learning kind of, like, why you guys do this stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's much more serious tone than what a lot of, like, you know, American gun owners kind of yeah. consider training for. You know, yeah. everyone's like, it's LARPing until it's not, yeah. you know? And for you guys, I, it's kind of interesting how ingrained in your culture is, like, yeah. we are all trained to fight the Russians. Yes. Kill them, I think. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, man, yeah. it was great talking yeah. to you and uh, getting some insight on your guys' gun culture and yeah. you know, how kind of based it is. Happy so. to have you here. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Well, anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. You can also find Yari at, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, at Yari Lai. Yari Lai, and then at Varsaleka as Varsaleka. well. If you guys want some really cool finished kit, go check out Varsaleka. <laughs> it's all really nice quality, and it also looks pretty badass. But <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.